Man like Mark Sullivan, worry yourself. Stay tuned for the chilling episode. Woo! A positive mental attitude can clear away all obstacles which stand between you and your major purpose in life. This is the Snowboard Project featuring Mark Sullivan and the Beat. The Snowboard Project. The The Snowboard snowboard project. Project. The Snowboard Project. Welcome back to the Snowboard Project. I'm Mark Sullivan. And I am the Beave. We are coming at you from the Snowboard Project Studios here in Ketchum, Idaho, with another, yep. another, <laughs> another episode. Yeah, another one, number yeah. sixty-seven, actually. Yep. Sixty yep. one of sixty-seven episodes so 67. far. Sixty-seven of many more to come. <laughs> wow, oh, really? I believe you. I believe yeah. you. Uh, today, something uh, something a little different. We're going to the right. I guess a really youthful rider. Yeah, the youngest interviewee. That we've ever had on the snowboard project. How young is he? Well, 18. I mean, 18. that's not like, I mean, legal to vote, not legal to drink, I guess. Right. Somewhere right. in the middle, the no man's land there. Okay. Legal to <laughs> okay. die for your country, but not to have a beer. All right. So right who, there. who is it? And why, and why are we interviewing this guy? Okay. So this guy is named Zeb Powell. Okay. And Zeb Powell is one of the most promising up and coming athletes in the sport of snowboarding. Now he has been going to the Stratton mountain school. It's a boarding school in Vermont. And basically they ride between five okay. and seven days a week. He's coached by Ross, the boss powers. Right, right. And so basically he is his entire focus for the last four or five years of his life has been entirely on snowboarding progression. And certainly he has done that. Let me ask you, how did it, 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 I imagine, okay, this is his first pro interview, right? He, he turned yeah, pro. Yeah, his the very day first he, pro interview. How was it? How was it interviewing him? Well, you know, I mean, here's the thing, Beav. It's like, I talked to guys who are like the vice president of marketing right. for Nike. Right. Right. And I talked to all sorts of different people. Right. Sure. But it's like, there's just different levels of like experience, life experience. Yeah. And so I would say, um, Zeb is certainly more at the beginning of that kind of curve sure. of life experience, but certainly is headed down a path which is going to lead him to all sorts of amazing experience. So really, I look at this interview like kind of a snapshot into the youth right. and that kind of, you know, the formative years of Zeb Powell. Did I hear it was uh, you were the most nervous you've ever been interviewing an 18 year old? I was kind of nervous, actually. Yeah, because <laughs> I was like, man, well, I mean, the kids never ridden a snowmobile, never been to Europe, right. never ridden powder so right. much, you know, and uh, like so our experience in snowboarding is a little bit different. Sure. And so just sure. trying to find that kind of common ground with Zeb um, had me nervous before I did yeah. the interview. But that yeah. said, you know, I would say that I am just so impressed with Zeb's riding mm-hmm. that I'm just like, wow, this kid is going places for sure. Cool. And so I just want to get on record him just talking about what it's like to be this guy who's basically making the gap or making that jump from being a kid who loves snowboarding, who does snowboarding sure. contests to being actually a paid professional athlete. Well, should we jump into the mind of Zeb Powell? Sure, let's do it. <laughs> what? Uh, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> All right. Zeb Powell, episode number 67. Today, I am joined by a very special guest, and this is an up-and-coming rider. He's actually still in high school. This is our our first high school uh, student, but here's the thing. It's like this guy is on the short list of guys, at least that I know and trust, whose opinions I know and trust, who is kind of earmarked for success in the competitive world of professional snowboarding. So, Without further ado, I'm going to welcome Zeb Powell to the Snowboard Project. Welcome, Zeb. Thank you. Right on. So you're you're in high school. Where do you go to high school? Stratton Mountain School. Right. So that's like a, a snowboarding academy, correct? Yep. And how long have you been going there? This is my sixth year. Oh, wow. So you've been um, in training for quite some time. 
Yeah, I've been in training for quite some time. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so what what's it like going to a snowboarding academy? What's the schedule like? How does that compare to a regular school? I mean, obviously, you've been in high school the whole time at Stratton, but how do you see the difference between, like, an academy and, like, what you would see in, say, movies as a regular high school? Um, well, for one, it's a lot smaller. Yeah. Not, and um, we're all athletes. So we all kind of have the same mindset. Right. Wise. And we go to, we go to school in the afternoon or snow in the morning instead of like, you know, first thing. You don't like go to school first thing. Well, at least in the winters. In the fall and spring, we do. We do that. the same schedule where we go to school in the morning. But once the winter comes, yeah, it's like snowboard in the morning to around like, 12 years and go to school, 12, 30, oh. 5. Okay. And so I take it you don't have gym class because it sounds like you're snowboarding five days a week or more. Yeah. We don't have, we don't have gym class, but we, we do train some, or like work out. Mm-hmm. What, what kind of workouts do you do? Is it like lifting weights or is it like uh, skateboarding or what do you do for training? Um. Do a lot of skateboarding. Um, we also we have workouts too, like um, yeah, it's a little bit of weightlifting, push up, pull ups, sit ups, like all that stuff, dumbbell presses. And then cool. We also have trampolines to practice stuff on too. Right. You know, I was. Uh I was talking to Ross, the boss powers, and uh, he was telling me that you're, you have like, you're one of two people at Stratton who can actually touch the ceiling in your kind of like air awareness trampoline zone. Um, do you, have you spent a lot of time on trampolines? I mean, what is that like and how does that help your snowboarding? Um, yeah, we spend a lot of time on the trampolines, I'd say. I actually like not this year as much, but the last few years, like, it's so fun, so we're like always down there. Mm-hmm. It really helps a lot. Um, just like doing it every day, it just helps your awareness a lot. I don't know. I, just, I have some weird thing in my hair, head that like helps me my awareness a lot too, just in general. Yeah, it's even more fun. You know, I, I've heard that that's one of the things that kind of sets you apart as a rider is that you've got an incredible sense of air awareness where like even if you mess up heading off the, the lip of a jump, that somehow you will miraculously get your board back underneath you and sometimes pull off tricks you didn't even anticipate even trying as you're departing the lip. Yeah, yeah, that happens a few times somehow. I don't know. Just how it goes i guess for me okay 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 so um so tell me this it's like um what kind of snowboarding do you focus on because i know you're in academy and people in academies like train for things like half pipe for the olympics stuff like that uh what are you in training for like if you could be any kind of snowboarder after you graduate from this academy what kind of snowboarder are you going to become filming slash slope because mm-hmm. I mean yeah I like slope a lot but I also really like the aspect of filming so right I don't have to do it like just that one time where it all counts and stuff kind of like mm-hmm. chill and like I can pick up my own tricks that I'm not going to learn like every time but you know they're cool and stuff Right. Now, it seems to me like uh, looking at your results, like watching your video parts and then looking at your results, right? When I watch you ride, I'm like blown away. When I look at your results, I'm not blown away, right? And so how do you explain that? And like, where is that going to take you? And how does that like result into a slope style career? I guess like I was like a coach that I was here. Um, like I have the tricks. It's kind of like got to figure out how to like put them together, lay them up. I put it down. I can. I guess that's how it's been for the last few years. Um, but I guess just kind of, you know, been up in the clouds, you know, just kind of doing runs and stuff. Not mm-hmm. really thinking about it. But like last year, I kind of started really thinking about it. So it's kind of all starting to fall into play. I guess. I guess we'll see this year. 
Right. So do you do like a run with like the triple 14s and that kind of thing? Or what? what is an ideal slope style run for you? Is it kind of a conventional Olympic style slope style run? Or is it something that's a little more out of the box because when I watch you ride you do a lot of kind of off the wall tricks and I'm like wow man if you could get scored well in a slope style run for doing those tricks that have in my opinion a lot of style right that that you kind of like make your own um you know but like what, what's your ideal slope style run yeah um one with a lot of tweaking you know twisting and stuff like different like like kind of the different taking the different route like i really like tuck me chicken wing and just i don't know just, not your conventional tricks I, I don't really see myself i mean i really don't see myself doing triples right which which doesn't forebode well for an olympic uh hat or slope style career but definitely plays into the idea of being a filmer right or now let me propose this other idea to you which is like what about like being a social media pro right or an influencer right where where it's like because i see you know the importance of instagram and and all of these social media channels uh, are becoming more and more important and and also by the way, from what I understand, you have the most viewed clip of 2018 on Snowboarder's Instagram page, which is no small feat, right? Well, now you do, right? That's what Bridges told me anyway. He could be lying, but I don't think so. Right from the, it was like the Young Guns event. You know what I'm talking about? The clip? Yeah, most viewed clip on Snowboarder's Instagram. 1.2 million followers. Not a bad accolade to have as a high school kid. <laughs> that's pretty cool so so what kind of tricks uh what are your like like your favorite tricks to do like uh, and uh and why i did this one last year it's like todio seven with tuck knee mm -hmm. I know. just todio toe rodeo yeah yeah a rodeo or front side rodeo 720 with tuck knee yeah we were just me and my friend were riding one day and like, oh, yeah, we'll learn Todios. And mm -hmm. we started doing them. And then um, my friend, Gray, whipped the camera out, or the iPhone out. And like, we just started filming. And I went to do it. <clears throat> and I grabbed, like, you know, Indy, just thinking I was going to grab Indy. And then I was like, spur of the moment, like, off the lip, just decided like, to tuck knee with it. And like made it come around differently, but like easier in land. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, that's probably like my, yeah. That's <laughs> one of my favorite trick. Okay. Okay. So how do you go about like visual, how do you go about like going to learn a new trick? It's like you, you and your buddy talked about it. Then you tried it. Do you visualize it? What do you go? What's the process from like coming up with the idea of uh, learning a new trick to the point where you actually land it for the first time? I guess I kind of think about it. I, I visualize it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just kind of test it out. You just try it a few different times on different stuff. But most of the time, it's usually like just, again, spur of the moment stuff. Nothing, I don't really think about it. It just kind of comes, I guess. Right. Okay. So let me ask you about this. You you already said stated that you are not – into those triples let's say um and i know that you're you're either on or going to be riding for nitro we'll get into that in a minute but uh i wanted to ask you about some tricks that i've been seeing popping up and i call them like combination tricks uh an example would be like uh Torge's uh, switch back five to method, like he does the switch back five and then methods at the end, or like Stale does a backside three and lands like in a wheelie, and um, you know what? What's your take on like the like that kind of style of riding? Do you think that's we're going to see more of that, or do you think we're going to see just directions going in it, like in every direction, basically as far as progression? I mean, I guess every direction. I'd, I'd like to see more of that stuff. That sounds super cool. Yeah. You give it a shot and stuff. Yeah, it seems fun. I don't know. I like both directions. Okay. Right. Just not adding 180s to the point where you're doing like a 2700 
quintuple. Yeah. You could do it, brah. You could do it one day. <laughs> Yo, Sully. Yeah. Guess what? What? I'm pretty proud of the people that have been listening to our podcast because they've obviously been sharing. Yeah. They've obviously been rating. They've obviously been reviewing yeah. us because we have been growing. Well, that would be the like the the way to tell that people have been right. listening. Sure. Right. Yeah. So they, they at least are enjoying what we're giving them. So I hope so. I mean, the numbers keep growing every i mean every week they're going up right so what do we have to do we have to say thank you to our listeners yes let's say thank you first of all thank you thank you yeah thank you if you have gone and you have rated us if you've gone and you've reviewed us if you have shared us with your friends your co-workers um your brother your sister thank you thank you for on that thank you for loving snowboarding like we do yeah right i mean honestly we have this shared passion this this common thread between us and so um i want to thank you for for making it seem like i haven't wasted my whole life focused on snowboarding (laughs) i don't think you have i I mean look at this thing that we're growing here this uh this community this i would say library of content that uh you can go back and you can listen to amazing stories from i don't know photographers and filmmakers and marketing people and pro snowboarders and you can get a really i guess whole view of what our sport is even in these last 70 episodes right yeah, I mean, really, it's like each episode is like a puzzle piece. Right. And then you can put those all together and you have just like a little piece of snowboarding there. You can kind of see the corner of the picture of snowboarding sure. with those just 70 puzzle pieces. Sure. But we're actually trying to make like a 10,000 piece puzzle here. <laughs> right, right. We'll see if we get there. I would say at this rate, we're going to be there pretty quick. But yeah. anyways, we just want to say thank you. Yeah. Uh, if you could um, share us more, rate us more, you know, push us across your platforms. We really appreciate that. That helps us. Yeah. So uh, give hey. us your feedback. We enjoy the feedback and we will talk with you we actually love interacting with our listeners so please like like beef said rate review subscribe tell your friends and also give us your feedback we want to make this better that is actually our goal is to constantly improve this podcast and make it better with each passing episode and here is to plenty more episodes in the future just for you all about snowboarding Are you pro or are you amateur right now? Um, I mean, I guess I am because I just saw that Johnny O'Connor and Mike Rav went pro. Yeah. I guess like pro is like the official pro is when you get your board or like, yeah, your pro model board and stuff or like boot. Right. It's like, I call myself am. I don't think I'm pro yet. but Do you get paid? I do get paid as of you- today. What do you mean as of today? What does that mean? Well, I signed my contract with Nitro today. Really? Did you did you sign your contract with Blood? Did you like prick your finger and then like signed your 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 uh, contract with Blood? Kind of like one of those. Uh... Um. Yeah, it pricked my finger and prick my finger and everything. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So. So you're you're a pro now. Well, paid. You're a paid snowboarder for Nitro, let's say. Yep. Well, congratulations if today is your first day. Wow, what a what an honor you get an interview and a contract on your uh, first day. That's not it's not a bad way to kick things off. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. So, um, so what is what is Nitro expect of you? Like, what are they? I know that there's kind of like this give and take in every kind of contract, right? Where it's like you, they give you boards, they give you money, um, you know, and maybe some travel, some other stuff. What what do they want in return for for uh, for that? You know, well, the classic stickers on the board. Um, uh, you know, showing up for events going on team trips and then just hyping up nitro, you know? Mm-hmm. Classic monster stuff, I guess. So Nitro's got a pretty strong team. Have you ridden with uh with the Nitro team before? Yeah, never. Really? So you you'd never met Marcus Cleveland or Torge or any of those guys? Okay. Are you going to be like competitive with them? Or are you going to be like sizing those guys up when you meet and be like, I'm going to do a better trick than them? Or are you going to hopefully get under their wing and have them kind of show you the ropes? I mean, I guess have them show me the ropes. I just like, 
don't know. Just want to ride and have fun with them. Have them push me, me push them, I guess. I don't know, both ways. Right. Well, I think you're in a, you know, I think that you're maybe the right guy for that job. We'll, we'll see. I mean, time will tell, but it seems like that, um, you know, like I said, when I watch your video parts, you definitely have a unique style and you're bringing something a little bit different to the plate. Um, who are your, who are your other sponsors right now? Do you, do you have other contracts that pay you? Um, I have two contracts up in the air at the moment. Uh huh. Two snowboard boots and, um, Red Bull, Red Bull, yeah, that's up in the air at the moment. It's not up in the air, it's like, you know, coming down. You hear that monster? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I watched that uh, that 32 edit from you at Brighton. What was that called? Uh, I think it's 32 Day, I don't know. 32 Day, I think that was it. But man, you had, I thought you had the best part in that thing. I thank I- you. And that was you had some pretty serious competition in there. The thirty two team's pretty amazing. Yeah, it was fun. We were having fun. So did you just fly out for that or how does that work when you're in school? Well, uh well, the school's kind of designed to help students be able to travel with work. Mm-hmm. Like leaning on it. So yeah, um, we travel a lot or we travel a little bit where um competitions and we just happened to be out in park city for a ref tour and um yeah it just happened to line up perfectly okay like, ref tour like right off the hip mountain to um, straight to um milo sports to meet up with um cook and mm-hmm. how, how long did it take you to film that part um we were like Four or five days. Four or five days. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay, so let me ask you this. Uh, It it occurs to me that, um, and I've heard this from some younger um, pro or younger guys who are like about to get their first contracts or getting their first contracts. There's this thing that goes into contracts called the first right of refusal. And so that is like a clause that kind of is written in in the benefit of the the companies in that... um, even if you do blow up, even if you become worth a lot of money, they can still uh, make you re-sign kind of the same contract. Do you have those kind of clauses in your contracts? Um, the, um, yeah, I think the 32 one's pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, I think we're getting them to sign that right now, though. Yeah. That, um, so I don't have to deal with that. We have that my head right it seems like it's pretty hard to read contracts are these things like 40 pages long or is it like one page of paper that's like hey do this do this we're cool um it's definitely not one page of paper that's like do this do this we're cool um yeah it's definitely a few pages yeah 32 ones pretty long and also the red bull one is huge right is it hard to read those things um um, I go, I usually don't read first. Usually, um, well, Ross is kind of like my agent. Mm-hmm. So, and um, from his days of competing, like when he was coming up, he had um, a agent slash lawyer who looked over all his stuff, like kind of did his stuff. Yep. And, they ended up being really good friends, and now he's like a huge. I don't forget what the name was, but like they look. Peter like, Carlisle Octagon. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah, they do like Michael Phelps and stuff. You're like being helped by the guy who helps Michael Phelps. Yep. Oh, not not bad. <laughs> right. Really, really lucky. Like thankful to have him. Just to be right there. Yeah. No payment, no nothing. Cause I just get it through Ross. So nice. Cool. Yeah. So I have, he looks over all the stuff and like, like scopes it out. Sees like, sees all the red flags and stuff. Right. Right. And, and, uh, Ross is like your coach. He's also your agent. He's also got the nickname, the boss. And I was looking through some videos of you online and this one pops up like from copper years ago. And you're like, 
Yeah, my nickname's The Boss. People call me The Boss. Is that coincidence? How do you get the nickname The Boss? Are you still called The Boss? What a coincidence. <laughs> I mean, you, you hear it every once in a while. I hear it every once in a while when I'm around, around there, around Copper. Yeah? Yeah, some of the coaches and staff that were there um, I became friends with. They saw me as a boss. And then, yeah, Chad Otterstrom. Yeah. He was my coach back then, so. Right. Right. It's funny. I asked Ross about that, and I was like, Ross, are you, like, pretty pissed or what? Are you going to, like, anti-coach him and tell him to do, like, the wrong tricks and not to land? He's like, no, he's a he's a boss in training. He's the next boss. And I was like, damn, Ross, you're the kid. You are the boss, <laughs> you know? Such a humble, down-to-earth guy, you know what I mean? And I guess that's the kind of training that, I mean, what, what kind of mentorship do you get from, like, an Olympic gold medalist? What's it like being coached by a guy who was so successful in, in what you're pursuing for your career and what, what you're going to be doing, um, you know, into the future? I mean, it's nice because, like, he went through, the whole, like, all the same thing. So he just kind of tell like, just leading the way. I kind of just giving me mentorship. He's so humble and everything. So like I don't know. I just kind of keep that in mind. Just kind of what you see, what you do, I guess. Right. It seem it seems like there's going to be a lot of people coming at you telling you how awesome you are. And I think the one of the things that you really can't learn, um, you know from like going to school online, let's say, or homeschooling yourself is actually how to deal with um, all of that coming at you and not starting to drink your own Kool-Aid and believing the hype, so to speak, and just being, um, you know, down to earth. And it seems like Ross is the kind of guy who you could learn that from. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Okay. So, so let's roll back the clock a little bit. Tell me, how did you, where are you from originally? Um, <clears throat> Waynesville, North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. Um, okay. So how does a kid from North Carolina become a snowboarder? Started with skating. Um, yeah, I was my friends, like six. He had a skateboard. I ended up like, riding it one day. Liked it. Liked it a little bit. He gave me that skateboard. Or it's more, um, Dad took notice to me liking skateboarding, so he bought me a real skateboard, took me to a skate park, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Didn't want to leave, but yeah, like, I went there, was like mesmerized and like awe of all the huge ramps. Yeah, so loved it. We stayed there for like an hour. <laughs> he told me, let's leave. I started crying, just like bawling. Did not want to leave. Do a huge fit. Really? I started with skateboarding. <laughs> that went on for a few years, like six to seven or eight. And then, yeah, all my friends were snowboarding and going up to the mountains on weekends, and I wanted to go with them. So um, I ended up wanting to do that, too. And, um, yeah, um, one of my dad's friends, um, his son was a college student who snowboarded. I knew all the guys up there. So he took me up one night. And um, yeah, first night I hit a box and it was all up from there, I guess. Okay. Okay. So how did you get into competition? How did you go from, you know, just being a kid recreationally riding to being a competitor and then ending up going to snowboarding camps and, you know, really becoming involved in the scene? Um, well, yeah, so I started snowboarding from there. He would take, he would just keep taking me up. And, um, yeah, we had a small park at that time. So like, we would just chill in the park. He knew, um, all the guys there. Um, like, uh, I don't know if you know him, the Sutton Brothers, brothers. I do not. Um, I think they used to ride for Air Blaster. Some of them. Okay. Yeah. Like, real low key East Coast. Um, yeah, so. They all kind of like took me under their wing and taught me tricks and stuff. And they, they noticed I was getting better. And two hours away from me, there is this place called Absky Mountain in Boone, North Carolina, that hosted these competitions, like rail jams and stuff, rail jams and jump jams. And so 
figured we'd try that out one night. Yeah, so we went up there one night and um, for a competition. Pretty sure we missed a competition, so I just ended up riding there that night. But, okay. Yeah, then we went back up for a um, big air, and I got second in that. It was like beginner. Yeah, I got second beginner. And I guess, yeah, so from there I just started doing those competitions and I kept placing and stuff. Yeah, uh-huh. so there. Then, yeah, then I went to camp. And then, yeah, just kept going. Right. So, how did you end up talking your parents into sending you to a snowboarding academy where you could ride five plus days a week? I think that would be the dream of a lot of kids growing up. Um, it was my dream, certainly, and my parents wouldn't send me. How did you talk your parents into it? I didn't. I started going to um, Camp Woodward when I was eight, and I kept going back, and they kept noticing my skill, too. Um, yeah, Chad. Chad did. I think. Chad, Chad Otterstrom? Chad Otterstrom, yeah. Sick. Do you know Chad Otterstrom? Yeah, he was my coach. Oh, really? Yeah, he was my coach the first time out there. He just kept me and my coach every year. Wow. It was sick to know him. Yeah, and so he was with SMS at the time, too. Mm-hmm. He was with SMS West. And, um, yeah, every time I would come to come to summer camp at the end of the week he would like tell my mom like hey, you, you should you should um, look into a snowboard school mm-hmm. and my first year my mom like laughed at him second year laughed at him third year like still wanted to laugh at him um yeah but then we finally like, started considering it i think around 2010 or 12 and um yeah so then eventually they mentioned they asked me about it because like i hadn't heard about any of this they had just been telling my parents and um i was like pretty intimidated i was like i i, I don't think i want to leave home I like i like still waiting here and everything right what was it like being in like sixth, seventh grade and like leaving your family, leaving, living at home and having to be out? I mean, obviously there's people like helping you, looking over you, but essentially you're, you're more or less on your own as far as making decisions and making sure you're at things on time and that kind of thing. What was that like? Yeah. The first year, like, yeah, like, as you said, like, you know, make on your own, making decisions and have all that stuff. That freaked me out thinking about it, but like second I got there, we went down to everyone's house. Like I just like met people and we had fun like the first day. Cool. Like, I don't know. I just kind of forgot all that stuff. And we had fun, snowboarding, just kind of cool. like learning as, as I went. Hey, what's up, guys? If you're out there listening, I just want to say thank you uh, for taking the time out of your day to listen to a couple of snowboarders talk about snowboarding. It really doesn't work without you guys sharing with your friends, people that are also interested in the sport of snowboarding. If you haven't noticed by now, we really have three podcasts. We have one, a real talk that's going to cover news. Um, That's going to be a lot of BSing and it's going to be a lot of just shop talk, stuff that you wouldn't normally get, uh, except if you were sitting in your uh, local snowboard shop talking and shooting the shit about what's going on in the world of snowboarding. Two, we have the industry insider, the person that on their blood, sweat and tears built snowboarding on their backs. And that will be something if you are interested in the industry to pay attention to. And three, we have the pro rider, the guy that built his life around snowboarding is currently building his life around snowboarding or the one that is about to. These three podcasts are meant to be little puzzle pieces that show you the bigger picture of snowboarding and hopefully you can take something from it, something that inspires you to do something interesting beyond snowboarding, inspires you to do something different the way that you express yourself either creatively or through your writing. That is the point of this podcast is to make you think and to create a conversation within our sport. So thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for rating. Thank you for reviewing. And if you have visited our Patreon, no, it does not go unnoticed. Thank you so much. Patreon.com forward slash the snowboard project.
cool. So, so have you ridden with a lot of pros? I mean, it sounds like you've been to a bunch of summer camps. It seems like you got a pretty good crew uh, where you're at. Have you ridden with a bunch of pros like out west or anywhere? Yeah, I've, I've ridden with a few. Yeah. Okay. Who are your favorite pros to ride with? Um, well, off the top of my head, without thinking at all, like, I just remember Max Worthington. Yeah. He was um, my coach at summer camp. I cascade. That was super fun. Right. And, and this crew. Oh, yeah. I got to ride with Tour Sign and like the DC crew over. Um, yeah, the, no, like the Shred Boss crew last summer. That was pretty fun. Really? Yeah. Like Jordan Morris, um, Brady Lim, Anto Chamberlain. Yeah. Tour Stein and Nick Baden came up also. They were pretty fun to ride with too. It was cool to see them all rip. Right. So, which guys are like the biggest, um, the biggest influence? The guys you look up that you try to emulate as far as their riding goes? Is it guys like Torstein? Is it Haldor? I mean, who who are you looking at? Or Cleveland? Or who are the guys that you look directly at and you'd be like, "Damn, I want to be as good as him," or "I want to do what he does." Um, a lot of people. You just said Haldor. He. He was always been like my favorite. Really? All the crazy stuff he does. I could see a little bit of Haldor in you, actually. Not the dread so much, but the uh, the riding more. Yeah. I guess it's kind of based off him. Yeah. I, I just, I've always really liked everything he does. It's just the insane kind of tricks. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I could see you fitting into one of those future of yesterday type movies. You know, one day, one day, you know, let's not put the cart before the horse here. Um, okay. So, um, uh, riddle me this. It's like, um, you know, it, it seems like that you have this like really promising career laid out in front of you and you've done a lot of the work. I mean, clearly it, you're a senior in high school, but you've been going for seven, eight years to camps. And I mean, you've really dedicated your life, your young life to snowboarding, um, but I mean, what happens if something goes wrong? What happens if you get injured or something unforeseen happens? I mean, life has lots of curveballs. Do you have another plan B, or is there? Is it just pretty much like I'm just gonna I'm the next Sean White? What's up now? I think I think I you know try to get back into it definitely. Yeah. If I couldn't I'll be take coaching now. I love coaching. Okay. Can I have a Cool. Cool. So still involved with snowboarding no matter what, basically. No matter what you're going to be doing, you'll be standing sideways. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's talk about your setup really quick. What, what board do you ride? What kind of stance, bindings, the whole – break it down for me. What's your setup like? Um, I ride the Beast. And I chose the Beast. Um, stance, front foot zero. Back foot is like – Negative three to six. Okay. Okay. That's an interesting setup. Yeah. What what size board do you ride? One fifty eight or nine. Okay. Okay. Pretty regular size. Um, you know, is that board uh, ideal for you, or, or are you like, man, I can't wait it to, for them to offer me a pro model or something so I can get in here and, and mix this thing up a little bit. Uh, that's pretty ideal board. Uh, yeah. I'm really hard on boards. That's the one that kind of withstand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so um, so that's your setup. How many boards do you go through a year? Like, how many boards are you breaking? How much stuff are you just like every week you're breaking another board, or do they last a while? Um, I, kinda, I feel like I've got it down to science. It's like probably a board a month. It'll probably last a month. Yeah. Month or more than a month if I'm lucky. Uh, yeah, I'll be riding it for like a month. Be like, oh, wow. It hasn't broken yet. I really hope it doesn't. Like, the next two days, boom, it's broken, probably. Right. Do you just have like a stack of like fresh boards ready? You're like, oh, pull another one out of the closet, mount it up. I'm ready. Basically, yeah. It's that or like one that's barely de lambed. Mm hmm. The board that I like, that was like, 
that just need to be put away for a second because I got a newer one. Mm-hmm. Just like get a freshie, you know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Um, what are your plans? Like, let's say you graduate uh, here in the spring. Do you move out west? Do you go to Mammoth? Do you go to Whistler? What, what do you do after you graduate? Um, I'll probably be around here for a year or two. Because, um, yeah, Rebel wants me as the East Coast writer. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I'll probably stay on the East Coast and just... I love Corinthia too, so I'll probably just be shredding there a lot. <laughs> right. So, so you'll be out of school. So basically, every day, full day shred. Yeah, something do, like that. Okay. Do Do you do any uh, street riding? Do you go out at night and jib some rails, or do you do any of that? Um, I have never done that. You've never done that. Done that. Ooh. Well, I think you have that to look forward to. So that if you haven't gone street riding, I'm taking it that you haven't ridden a lot of backcountry jumps. But one that I can remember was, um, yeah, Chad, Otterstrom. we were out there for a camp with SMS and um, Chad Otterstrom took us up to Loveland and we dug out a jump <coughs> and hit it. But I mean, it wasn't like anything crazy. It was just like, you know, small jump in powder right but you were able to land in powder no problem have you ridden a lot of powder i mean not a ton it's resort pow yeah do you like powder yeah okay good i was gonna say this interview's over <laughs> no i'm just kidding uh okay so uh so you're gonna stick around there you're gonna live in southern vermont um you know, where, where are you going to be like, okay, that's next year. Where are you going to be 10 years from now? Because I think there, you do have people knocking on your door. I know Bridges has called you up for a few different things. You've been to the launch, maybe to Super Park. You'll start going to that here pretty soon. Um, where, what are you going to be doing with snowboarding 10 years from now if all goes to your perfect plan? I don't know. Just kind of like, you know, go where the wind takes me. Just keep having fun on my snowboard wherever, whenever. Yeah. Okay. I don't really have any plan. Okay. And and what did your parents think about all this? Are they stoked that you're going to stay in Southern Vermont and and have sponsors and all? Are they stoked on that or like, oh, we wanted you to go to college? Oh no, they they back it completely. Dad will do like do anything for me. So like he he backs it so much. He he's really excited for me. Cool. My mom is too. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you're just like basically like an arrow being shot from a bow right now. If like you just signed your contract, you're you know, it seems like things are starting to go your way pretty good. So so um are you snowboarding like all year round? Like it sounds like to get as good as you are that basically you're maybe taking a month off a year, two months off a year or or more. I Went to a little bit of copper, right before um, the end of April for, for a week, and that's the only summer boarding I did. So, no, definitely not year round. Okay. Yeah, well, pretty soon you'll be in lax in September or, or whatever, right? You'll be all Japan in January, lax in September. You'll be at Mount Hood in July, whatever. Um, but anyhow, so interesting. So, so tell me a little bit more about yourself personally. Like, what what are the favorite three places that you've ridden? Like your favorite uh, resorts you've ridden or places you've gone? Corinthia, probably. I oh, don't know. So much fun. Yeah. Green time labs, Corinthia. Oh my gosh. There's any warm day. It's awesome. Yeah. Around huge bigger. Um, definitely had a lot of fun at Mammoth when the weather's good there. I haven't been there that many times, so I also I also remember having a ton of fun at Okimo too. Okimo. Yeah. I really like the biggest snow mountain, but I don't know. I always have fun there.
Hey, folks, if you're out there listening to the Snowboard Project. Boring. <laughs> nice pitch, dude. I think we've done that one a lot. Oh, damn. Yeah. Come at it with a little, okay. come out a little harder. Come okay. A little more creative. <laughs> Don't need to be creative? Yeah. Do it now. Hey, folks. <laughs> Starts with hey, folks again. He hey, folks, you guys. He hey, folks, you. Yeah, he did. All right. All right, what do you got? I don't have any ads. You do the ads, Beeb. All right. If you're I do out- the interviews, you do the ads. How about that? All right. Uh, hey, what's up, guys? This is Beeb here. <laughs> oh, so much better than hey, folks. <laughs> Not folks, guys. Yeah. It's so much. It's such a... It is really hard asking people to do really, like, stupid things for you like hey could you just uh go like rate and review our podcast would you mind double nodding that yeah. shoe <laughs> would you mind just tying my shoe for me hey if you're out there and you really want to help a couple snowboarders out could you just come to sun valley and just tie our shoes but an easier ask would be can to, you tie my boot for me yeah, beef? an easier ask would be just to go to your itunes rate us review us <laughs> help us and sullivan's over there crying because he's laughing so hard help us uh help us out here we're just a couple snowboarders that want to make an awesome podcast for you if you can go rate review us and hey if you feel like donating to us if you feel like uh giving us uh you know uh um a couple bucks you can go to our patreon patreon.com forward slash the snowboard project you guys rule okay um let's see uh have you ever traveled out of the country to snowboard never never Wow, you're just so green right now. You got everything in front of you. That's got to be pretty exciting. Um, where, where do you want to go? I mean, obviously, you, you probably follow all these guys on Instagram. Where are the places that you dream of going? Relax. That place seems really cool. It's Dubai. Looks sick. David Edits from there. So, yeah, it's Dubai. It looks really sick. I'd love to go there. Right. Do you do you like traveling? Do you like going through airports and that whole thing? Or are you kind of like, oh man, I can't wait to get there and just chill? I love traveling as long as yeah. it's like so. Right. And stuff. It's always fun. You know, it seems like well, I know that you're going to be doing a lot of traveling, collecting a lot of frequent flyer miles. Um, how do you stay? Uh, you know, how do you stay focused on progression and, and constantly moving forward? Does it come naturally for you where you're always like, okay, I landed that. Well, now I got to try something even harder. Do you constantly push yourself just, just by the nature of riding with your crew or is it your crew kind of pushing you little baby steps along the way? Or how do you stay motivated to keep progressing so rapidly? It just kind of comes. Like, I just kind of think of stuff, you know, you know try that. Or, you know, just like progress and try something that I usually wouldn't try like 20 times until I get used to it. Or just like riding with friends, that kind of helps stir the pot for tricks and learning stuff. Right. It's usually, yeah, it's pretty, I don't know, it's the open book. You were just saying how you, you try a trick like 20 times, right? And you're crashing then 20 times to land a trick, let's say. Have you ever gotten like a serious injury, like where you're like out for months? One kind of bad injury. Um, I tore my AC joint once. We were at Keystone one day and I was like, a little hook jump. It was heel side. I was like, yo, let's, let's flip this. You know, why not? I guess, yeah, I like to go big and... Um, and I'll be popping it, but since it was like heel side, it kind of, I guess, it messed with me mental, messed with me mentally, or like I don't know, just threw me off. And I just ended up stopping upside down. Like I went really high too, and just dropped to my shoulder. I was out for like <clears throat> a month. Okay. So, but but at least you're you're familiar with uh, rehab and everything else, and I think you probably have a pretty good foundation. Just being surrounded by athletes all the time who are dealing with that kind of on an ongoing basis. What do you, what do you visualize the biggest challenges of being a pro are going to be? What do you think the challenges are of, uh, of moving forward with a career in snowboarding? I guess planning, figuring out what I'm going to do for the season, where I'm going to go, like where the wind takes me, just learn, learn how it goes. I'll figure it out. I guess. 
Right. Are, are you worried about some of the pitfalls of the partying and like falling into those booby traps and going full bozung on things? Or uh, or are you kind of like you think you got pretty much a good plan and have like a good background enough where you're like, OK, I know exactly, um, you know, what I'm doing and, and where I'm going. I mean, I feel like I know what I'm doing, where I'm going. I don't, I don't think I'm going to what what is the hardest part about uh about being a high school kid and balancing like this the demands of being an athlete and also schoolwork what's the hard part about that like is that something that you're that you find easy or is it hard definitely not easy i'm i'm not really the strongest worker in the first place when i come to school it doesn't come easy either <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, I'll get through it. Usually, like, in the, I come back for the spring and just hammer work, like, the whole spring that I missed. But, I mean, I'm as I get older, I'm trying to, like, get it done as it comes, as it, when it comes, so I don't mm-hmm. blow my head all season. Um, but yeah, it's not, not too bad. Tell me about, like, your, um, just about like what tricks you're going to be that you have in your head that you're going to be working on for this season to, to maybe film or to do in the park or whatever. Like what kind of things do you visualize are going to take your riding to an even another level? I guess getting to ride more Mm -hmm. Um, different places, see different things. And I also think just riding people that are better than me, like watching them, getting hyped on them hearing their input and stuff. Right. Are are there any tricks specifically that you have kind of earmarked uh, to, to stomp? To stomp this year? Yeah. I mean, I've never, I've never successfully landed a dub 10. So, you know, I think that'd probably be a deal to land this year, I guess. I guess we'll see, though. Okay. Yeah, okay. So let's... Let's do something called the threes right now. Um, and these are things that are basically like three, your top threes, right? And so this give people a little snapshot of things. So like, what are your, your three activities b- besides snowboarding? What three things do you like to do besides snowboarding? Skateboard, wakeboard, I like biking a lot too. What are your goals with snowboarding? Is it like a pro model, a video part, um, a gold medal? What are the things that you're you're looking to get out of the, the sport of snowboarding? Do you have goals set up for yourself now? I mean, you've said you're just kind of going with the wind or whatever, but certainly you must have some boxes you're looking to check. The video part would be really cool. I, I think that's my main goal. I like put out a good video part that I like myself kind of like you know put together myself or kind of like put the idea out for myself like what i like so winning i mean a pro model would be super cool too those are the only real like, like main goals at the moment right on cool so uh so just final question tell me about your best most fun day of snowboarding ever there was day in Mammoth. Yeah, we were there for a Mammoth Rev Tour last year, and our friend was competing. It was kind of windy out. We all just kind of were like, hey, let's go over to South South Park, or like around South Park. We just got to shred. And we all just went and shredded power for like that whole day. And that was super fun. Cool. Well, you know, I'd say you got a lot of powder days, a lot of slush days ahead of you. And, uh, I just want to say congratulations again. I'm a fan. I'm a little bit old, but I still can appreciate the kind of riding you do. Your unique take on snowboarding is is really impressive to watch. And so I'm um, hoping that I see you riding alongside Torge and Marcus Cleveland and Haldor here soon. So thank you very much, Seb. I, I really appreciate your time here today. Thank you for taking the time to interview. Well, have a great day. Say what up to Ross for me and uh, Scotty Johnson. I'm friends with him as well. And ha- have a great day. Thank you. On behalf of Mark Sullivan and the Beeve, thanks for listening to the Snowboard Project. 
Remember, ride fast, take chances, dream big, and take action. And for God's sake, don't be a... Don't forget to support Advertising Free Snowboarding Media at Patreon.com. The Snowboard Project. The Snowboard Project. The Snowboard Project.